terms of us serving those two parties, ultimately Salty Farm Ministries was asked to, to leave the parking lot. Uh, it wasn't a permanent thing, it was just asked to leave for the evening. And uh, so we respected the order and we, uh, we packed up. But I'll tell you the truth, in the moment my flesh got to me. In the moment I was angry, I wanted to scream, cuss, yell, fight, flight, run, hide. I mean, I'm a human. And, uh, and you know, in the, in the midst of that storm, uh, a brother in Christ right here come up behind me and he grabbed me by the shoulders and he said, JL, everything's going to be all right. God is doing a work. And you know, it took, and in that moment, I just had a sense of peace. And you know, it reminded me at the beginning of the night, I had asked Jesus to show up when we, when we call on him, when we come in prayer. And I asked him to show up. I asked him to go before us, beside us, and behind us. And in the storm, I lost sight for that single moment. I lost sight of Jesus. My eyes set on flesh. My eyes set on what I knew best in life. I went back to my old ways. Not knowing that uh, he had done gone before us. He come right around the corner and he made a way for us to use this parking lot last Monday night. And it was actually through a man that we served that he got this parking lot donated to us for the evening. And I'll just say this, that man doesn't believe in Jesus. And so it's amazing to just see how God moves and works. He was working through someone that didn't even know he was being worked through. And so, uh, Parlor Donut gave us their uh, blessing to use the parking lot that night. And once we moved around the corner, uh, we packed everything up, we came around the corner and we set the speaker right here. And I was, you can ask anyone that was here, I was distraught, I had done lost, uh, I'd been interrupted by the police three times during my message over there. And I, I really lost sight of what was even going on or what I was even trying to bring the Lord wanted me to bring. But uh, once we got back over here, I set my eyes back on Christ. And I asked for everyone to circle up and we called in for an order of prayer. And I grabbed this microphone and we just came to Jesus. And in the moment I said, Lord, sometimes you do things and we don't understand. We don't understand things. And Lord, sometimes we lose trust, but the ultimate thing is we have to trust you. And we give it all to you in this moment, Lord. I appreciate you resetting, and I appreciate you going before us. And so, uh, Lord, just uh, do your work and work through each and every one of us. And so the night began. And as I said, I believe the reason the attacks that came last week were because, some of you may not know this, but in three weeks we're moving to three nights a week, and we're at three different locations across this community to serve. And so, uh, ultimately, the devil knows and he hates it he wants us to quit he wants us to give up he wants us to go back to Illinois where we came from and he wants us this whole thing to shut down and so he's gonna come with all he has and so I just am here and, uh, and as reading and preparing this message this week uh, I was brought to John 15 20 and it says, if you persecute, if they persecuted me, this was Jesus speaking, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. In John 16, 33, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And in that moment, it was as I was reading that, I was like, wow, in the tribulation, I'm to have good, I'm to have joy, I'm to be of good cheer. And how I let my flesh get to me. Isaiah 61, 7, instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your, in your Lord or in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. There's joy again. And so we forget in the storm a lot of times that Jesus goes before us. He is beside us and he is going to come behind us. And I know sometimes it feels as if he is not there, like we're all alone. And I assure you, if you're here and you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, 
He will not leave you or forsake you. In James 1, 2 through 4, and verse 12, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Verse 12, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And so isn't it awesome that uh, it's awesome to know that whenever your faith is being tested, that your endurance is growing. And in his word, it says that when, trouble, when troubles come of any kind, it's an opportunity for joy. So instead of anger, hate, fight, flight, his word says, I'm to be of great joy. Seek Jesus, lean on Jesus, look to Jesus, and call on Jesus. In Romans 5, 3 through 5, we can rejoice too when we run into troubles and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So friends, I'm here to tell you, don't lose hope. Yeah. Jesus has not left or forsaken you. All the way back in the Old Testament, in the very first book, Genesis 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. And that was Joseph that said that. So I believe as the leader of the ministry... The devil was trying to tempt me last week. I believe he was testing me, and God allowed it. I was being tested to see if I would let my flesh take control, or if I would set my eyes on the Savior, who is Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. We learned so far of what I've read tonight, that in yeah. trials we get endurance. So God allowed it. I asked him to go before us, along to the side of us, and come behind us. And in the moment, I didn't want to follow him. He was already over here like a little baby and the mom far away for, as his speaker saying, come on, come on, trust me. And in that moment, I didn't want to go. I didn't understand what was happening. Once reminded he was working, I set my eyes back on him. I asked for his will to be done. That was his will for us to move over here. That's right, dude. His will is not my will. His understanding is not my understanding. So we need to trust in him always and not lose sight of him. Even when we don't understand. So if you are going through things right now and you feel like he is not there or he is not listening or that you don't matter, those are all lies of Satan. And remind you, Satan is the father of lies. Jesus is there. He does listen. And you do matter. I encourage you to lean into him. And as I had to last week, he let me go through, the, through that for a reason. The reason of giving him all the glory. Amen. Those that were here got to see his mighty hand work when there seemed to be no way. It wasn't until Tuesday... Once I ran in, uh, ran it through my head, I spoke to several brothers and sisters in Christ and even in Paul to talk to my wife, who unfortunately hasn't been able to be here for the last couple weeks. Until I, And it took all those things for me to really step back and see what God was actually doing. What he had done, what he was doing, and what he was about to do. So maybe the manager over at McDonald's needed to hear about the Lord that night. Maybe the officers that came out here on the call needed to see exactly what we do on Monday night. So maybe they needed to hear God's word. The connection that we made at Parlor Donut had been trying to be made for six to eight months. And maybe this was God's way of making that connection. Maybe as the leader of the ministry, I needed to be tested. Sometimes it takes one door to close for another door to open. Maybe there was a friend here 
who is on the fence about this whole Jesus thing that we keep coming up here each and every week talking about. Well, you got to see his full power and glory through the story, this story, and this testimony. Amen. So I know tr Satan was trying to destroy us, get us kicked out of McDonald's. Well, on Tuesday morning, my belief, when I woke up, actually when I left Friday night, uh, Monday night, I looked to Max and I said, Max, he's going to try to destroy one parking lot. We're going to get to rain over three parking lots. He's going to get to rain. And so uh, that was my belief as of Tuesday morning. And so I'm here to stand here today and tell you that uh, we now have full permission to be on this parking lot from this day forward. I do believe that uh, the amendment uh, that we we are amending uh, we are amending what, what happened over at McDonald's. It may not be that McDonald's, but the, the family owns 28 McDonald's is in the area, and I do believe that we're going to move across the bridge and use some of their parking lots. And we also have permission at Walmart. So on Tuesday, I went to the Ark. Ironically enough, somewhere I don't go very often, and spoke to Mike and Liz Bennett. They had said this guy here that owned this Parlor Donuts was an amazing guy. That he started Parlor Donuts inside the ark. When I left, I was in tears and I could not believe that all this was taking place. I was like, you can't make this stuff up. And so uh, on Wednesday, I woke up and I came up here to talk to the manager. And I came in at about 11.30. They told me he leaves at noon. And so I walked in the door, I asked for Itis, and uh, they said, we'll get him. He came and he, he said, uh, can I help you? And I said, my name is JL, I'm the Salty Farm Ministries, and I'd like to know if I can make connection with your uh, owner. And uh, I know that he lives up north, and uh, I just wanted to know if I could make connection. And he said, well, what, what is it that you need? And I said, sir, I was wanting to know if we could make a partner, like if we could become partners for further use of that and he stopped me dead in my tracks and he said you can use that parking lot back there anytime you want and so in the moment i was so overwhelmed by the lord that whenever i walked out i had tears of joy running down my face but i could not believe what had just took place this roller coaster that i've been on for the last couple weeks of trials and tribulations that the lord was letting uh come my way to build me up uh the outcome was we uh, that we stand here tonight and it's our, it's our Father in Heaven that we give Amen. the glory to because He made a way when there seemed to be no way. And so, uh, all this is also happening while the, the one that truly uh, truly is uh, is the one that does a lot. That's Rochelle. I'm not going to take that from her because she, she is uh, she's a backbone of this ministry. But all this is taking place while she's not here. And so, uh, I'll back up the Monday night. Max and I went over and we spoke to uh, the, the lady. And Max made a point that, you know what? Because she was beside herself. She's like, I never meant for anyone not to get fed. And then we walked out and apologized to McDonald's as a whole from a, from a ministry standpoint and from an individual standpoint. Even though we directly didn't do anything, uh, the ones we served were the ones that caused the problem. So uh, Max says, man... I think I think that just lifted a weight off of her, and you could see it. It was a 20-minute conversation, I believe, 10-minute conversation that we had with her, and it was just it was just is amazing. And we we come out in the parking lot and talked how God how she is going to go tell her managers what took place, and how we came in at the end of the night when everything wrapped up and everyone went home. We went in and made apologies to to her and to McDonald's for the, for what went down. And so you see, in the midst of the storm, we have to step back and really look at what Jesus has been doing, what he is doing, and what he will do. In Isaiah 41, 13, For I hold you by your right hand, I, the Lord your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid, I am here to help you. In Deuteronomy 31, 8, Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. And he will neither fail you nor abandon you. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. And are called according to his purpose for them. So just to recap real quick. The enemy army had us up against the Red Sea. Where there seemed to be nowhere to go. But God made a way. 
The enemy thought he destroyed our place of serving, but God made available more places to serve from. The enemy tried to knock us out, tear us down, and get us to quit, but God and the storm gave us endurance to make it through. But God gave us the strength to seek him and find him in the storm when there seemed to be no way across the sea. And so when we come to a Red Sea moment in our lives, even as hard as it is, seek him. Hold up your staff. Have another brother or sister help hold up your staff with you. Let the test build your endurance and let him make a way through. In 2 Corinthians 12, 8, Paul had a vision of a thorn in the flesh. And Paul said, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, the Lord said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And Paul here again says, so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And last Bible verse, Psalm 34, 4 through 8. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joy of this, of the joy of those who take refuge in him. So uh, as we uh, as we take this time and uh, we're going to move into uh, into communion and a time to remember who Jesus is.